Hello, I'm a nostalgia critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Well, it finally happened. I've been traumatized by the movie I just saw. A film so bad that my doctor tells me I may never speak again. What film brought me to such a speechless state? Well, let me tell you the story of a sauerkraut named you evil. He is being declared the new Ed Wood of the film world. A man who constantly keeps making horrible movie after horrible movie and yet somehow keeps making money. He mostly makes video game films like House of the Dead and Blood Ring. His gimmick is that he exercises German tax loopholes that reward his investments into the film even if they totally bomb. So if the movie loses money, the investor got a tax right off. He's also well known for challenging his critics to a boxing match and beating the living man shit out of them. Class act. Because of his unfortunate popularity, many of my viewers have been requesting me to review one of his movies. I took a look at one of his more famous films, Alone in the Dark, and am now paying the consequences. I'd love to review the movie for you but I do not want to sound like Stephen Hawking's speaking coach. So it looks like I'm going to pass on this one unless I can find someone to Did review- Did someone say Uva Bowl? Man, I've wanted to take a shot at that cinematic Hitler for years! How did you get in here? I'm from the future. What? I'm just kidding, I uh, broke in. Well, not that I wouldn't want to watch the movie again with you, Spoonie, but I fear a film this bad would take at least three reviewers, so unless you can find someone Hi, else- Hey, guys! Oh, Jesus, no. I saw the nostalgia signal in the sky. Why did I install that? No one should have to watch Uva Ball alone, especially with Spoonie. Hey, dude, check out what I can make the nostalgia critic say. I like to wear women's clothing. I like to wear women's clothing. <laughs> Well, I guess we have enough people to withstand the horrors of the hole. So what do you say we watch alone, in the dark, with a group, in the daylight? Sounds great! Totally looking forward to it! Goody. We start off with an opening text scroll explaining the background of the story. Mine workers discovered the first remnants of a long lost Native American civilization, the Apkani. The Apkani believed there are two worlds on this planet a world of light and a world of darkness. The Apkani were kind of stupid that way. The Apkani opened a gate between these worlds. The Apkani mysteriously vanished from the earth. They never think to look under the fridge. Only a few artifacts remain. Hidden in the world's Good most God, how long is this? It's like Alone in the Dark, the audio book. Legends. Bureau 713 began collecting Apkani artifacts. When the government... Ah, God, how much text is in this movie? This isn't a Legends bill for health care. Let's get to the friggin' action already. There, he conducted savage experiments on orphaned children. Boring, this, is this is so boring. This is so boring. Get to the show. Survived as sleepers. Lost souls awaiting the moment of their calling. Wait, I missed something. Could you start it again? No! No, 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 it's not about a few children. It's about the future of our species. Wow, James Lipton has found a way to become even hammier. So one of the kids escapes from the evil experiments and hides in the safest place he can think of, a high-voltage electricity box. But it's okay, he's saved by a flash forward to the future. Oh no, he grew up into Christian Slater. Did you have a nightmare? My mommy says that there's nothing to be afraid of in the dark. My mommy also says I should pick an accent before I act! This is Edward, our main character, who makes his living as a professional monologuer. My name is Edward Carnby, and I'm here to protect you from the things you don't believe. You see, there's a world around you that you've trained yourself not to see. So maybe you're thinking I'm an asshole, scaring that kid for no reason. No, we think you're an asshole for a lot of other reasons. When I was ten, I lost my memory. Gone. Erased. You don't have to believe me. Why start now? What do you do? 
I'm a paranormal investigator. I hunt and track down the strange and unusual. I think his performance in The Wizard is an upgrade compared to this. The calves have been following us since we left the airport. You want me to lose him? Wouldn't mind. Shit! Be careful! Jesse Ventura's been known to kill people! So they have themselves a little car chase until the Ventura douche nails them in a corner. Slater tells the cab driver not to move. So long, rare white cab driver guy! You know, for protecting us from the things we don't believe in, he really sucks at it. So rather than just attacking the guy, he climbs up a fence, walks over a bridge, and then attacks the guy! I guess he figured he could use the exercise. <laughs> You don't have to beat up the door, pal. You could have just as easily gone through the window you smashed through. And here he's crashing through another window. What is with this guy and his fear of doors? Did a door kill his family? <laughs> what is with the physically impossible Street Fighter move? Panic, boom! Nobody can levitate a kick like that from off the ground. Unless, of course, the man was... Doris. So Slater tries to shoot the guy, but it turns out bullets are just like milk duds being thrown at him. Yes, because it worked so well the first time! So wait a minute, knocking him senseless does nothing, shooting him does nothing, but falling on a sharp pointy stick that just happens to be laying around on the ground is what kills him. That just makes no sense! Unless, of course, that man was... Chuck, Chuck Norris! Norris. Chuck Norris. No, 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 that not makes even no sense. So we get to a scientist named Aileen, played by Tara Reid. How do we know she's a scientist? Well, because she has glasses, of course. And as we all know, any woman who has glasses is either a scientist or an adventurous librarian. As if wearing glasses makes you look any smarter. I need glasses. It's probably for the big Upconny show. Upconny? What the hell's Upconny? Oh, it's an ancient Native American civilization. Okay, yeah. Don't you know, like, everyone knows about the Upconny tribe. It was all over MTV News last week. For sure. So we see Slater trying to walk away from the plot when he has a sudden suspicion like he's being followed. He's not. Huh. You know, from the way they were shooting, I could have sworn he was being followed. Nope, he's just walking home with no conflicting obstacles whatsoever. Huh. Kind of pointless, really. Yeah. So it turns out, a paranormal agent makes pretty good money, as he lives in what looks like a mix between a garage and a furniture showroom. So he looks at his archaeological decoder ring to see if he can find any clues as to what it translates out to. We then cut to a ship in the middle of the sea where Professor Lionel Hudgens and Gordon Fisherman here make an incredible discovery. A box made out of 100% pure gold. Whatever's inside must be worth a fortune. Oh, you have no idea. But faster than you can say, hands off me booty, the sailors lock the professor in another room and try to steal the box away, opening it up and releasing a horrible creature. Oh no, my acting is going Shatner. For some reason, everyone decides to... just walk off the movie! I mean, jeez, I knew Uva Ball was a horrible director, but to have all the actors just walk off the movie at the same time, that's pretty bad. So the professor opens up the door that was just locked a second ago to find that the entire crew has been murdered. This gets the attention of the Agency of Paranormal Investigations, Bureau 713, filled with the most attractive people that GQ can afford. There's no malfunction, sir. Jesus Christ. Hey, look, it's that guy who consistently almost has a career. Steven Dorf? Yes. <laughs> 